Welcome to Watch and Learn. I'm Christina Whitney, a Handy Quilter Studio Educator, and with me I've got Kimberly Sandberg, another studio educator. Today we're going to be talking about binding, yes. different types of binding, mm -hmm. the right and wrong way, which there isn't. There isn't. No, nope. there's a, a huge variety of ways that we can do binding. Yeah. So Kim, let's talk about this pile. We're just yeah. going to jump right in. We, we, we got we stacks have? today, don't yes. we? Yes, <laughs> we got lots to cover today. We started <laughs> talking about binding, and we both have a lot of memories, don't we? Yep. And we were like, oh, you remember the way that so-and-so did it and so-and-so did it? So we brought in, we went home, went through all of our stuff. We found quilts that show all different ways of binding. Yep. So we'll start with, this is actually my, like, this was my blankie when I was little. <laughs> But this is, this is one, and, and the quilt is tied, and it's done in like an envelope method. So it was all sewn together, think of like a pillowcase, sewn together, then turned right side out, then um, plopped on a frame uh, and, and tied. And then my grandma, and I, re I remember her always talking about this, she had a sewing machine and she had some nice fancy stitches and it's a little bit hard to see these stitches because she used a thread that blends really well but she did a fun she would always do a fun decorative stitch and i remember she had a big um, card that came with her sewing machine and we would get to pick the stitch that we wanted <laughs> to go around the outside of the quilt That's so fun. yeah so let me just make sure that everything is clear on this one yeah so you're going to take all of your layers that you your normally use mm -hmm. for a quilt. Yeah. Um, you're going to put your batting. Yeah. Your quilt top, and then put your backing right side together with your quilt top. Right. Right. Stitch around the whole outside, leaving an opening area. Yes. Then you'll flip it inside yep. out and finish off that opening. That that little opening so. there. Yeah. yeah. And my because we always tied our quilts. Um, growing up, that's my family. Nobody, um, hand quilting took too much time. We could tie a quilt in an afternoon with all the ants. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. we could do quite a few. And we would just thumbtack this in the envelope, turned right side out together, on, right on the frame. Yeah. Would your family do similar? Yes, and I would actually use this method also when I was quilting on my domestic machine. Yeah. I, I didn't really know yeah. how to finish quilts. Yeah. That was the way that I had been taught, and so I thought that's what we did. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it was. I mean, this, this was the, this was the <laughs> way that we did it. This is the way that we did it. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this method too, especially mm -hmm. if you have you know tying quilts in your history. So that's kind of the first method that yeah. we both knew about. And we did mention at the beginning that there's no right or wrong no. way to any of these methods. Yeah. So whatever way works for you is, is the right way to do it. It's finishing the quilt, getting it done. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Finishing it. So this next one, this is one of the quilts that you have, right? Yes, this is one of my grandmother's quilt tops. It's gorgeous. And this is the roll the backing to yes. the front method. Yes. So I just left enough extra backing, and we did a really thick binding on mm -hmm. this one because we wanted it just a little bit bigger. Yeah. And um, and I just zigzagged over it. Right along the edge there. Yeah. No fancy stitches for you, huh? Not on this one. Not on this one. <laughs> and this, you know, I, I have done a lot of baby quilts like this, and I mm -hmm. feel like... Um, this method is really great for, I guess what you kind of call utility quilts, quilts mm -hmm. that are going to get used and washed a lot. Yeah. They are durable, it works really well, and I remember growing up, like, when these would start getting a little worn out, <laughs> we we just cut, it off cut them and, put one. and roll it again <laughs> and stitch it down. <laughs> like, I didn't do the roll it. again method. We, oh yeah, yeah, oh. I remember, I remember my grandma, like, going in, I think she actually, like, um, she'd, she'd like cut off the edge here that had frayed a little bit uh -huh. and then she would just roll it twice. So maybe that's why I started with another. such a thick one. <laughs> yeah, so that you could, you could trim and roll down the road. And then once again, grandma would get out her awesome decorative stitches and do around the edges. But yeah. it's great for utility quilts and it's a really fast way to finish a quilt too. One, so. one tip for this, mm -hmm. um, I didn't leave a whole lot of extra batting. batting in there, so it's kind of flimsy. So if I were doing this one again, I would make sure I had enough batting to keep right. that binding nice and firm. Yeah, not nice really firm, firm, but yeah. Well, old. just fill, filled out as <laughs> yeah. much as the rest of the quilt is. Yes. But you know what? It still works. It's done. It's not wrong. <laughs> it still works. It's great. Yep, it gets used so, exactly. Oh. So let's take a look at this next one. So this is one of Christina's favorites. This is, this is doing just regular 
finding yep. what now in the you know the quilting world it's mm -hmm. you, you do your strip you press it in half stitch it roll it stitch yep. it down right but you did this one all on the machine it looks like I did do it all on the machine but do you notice anything kind of funky oh, about this yeah. one this is this is Christina's hallmark it is scrappy <laughs> because she just I'm sure used whatever was left yep. right and actually this is all a flannel oh. so I just went through I take all my yeah. binding tails yeah. and I throw them in a bag. Oh, I have a drawer that I keep them in. Yeah. yeah. And so I went through and I found all of my binding tails that kind of coordinated with this color scheme. Perfect. Stitched them Stitch together, together and then I just did my binding. So I've got like one, two, three, four, four at least five. Just four fabrics yeah. right there. So great. So it's it's great. a great way to use up those binding tails and you don't have to make another one for Exactly. This quilt. Exactly. Yep. And you must have stitched this. Um, so if, when you're doing this one, did you stitch to the back and then roll to the front and stitch it down? Or do you remember? Generally, when I am doing machine stitching, mm -hmm. I will stitch it onto the back and then flip it over. This one, actually, I stitched it onto oh, the, the front, front and rolled it over. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can yep. see that edge a little bit there. But that's, yeah. it's good. And it's a good tough binding. You're able to miter the corners well. It mm -hmm. looks great, yeah. yeah. And I, I love me a scrappy binding, too. I actually it, will. It adds character, I know. Right? I will, I will do it on quilts because I like the just the character it gives it. Yeah. It makes it gives it a little yeah. bit of a fun touch. So and, and with it being a really crazy scrappy oh, yeah. quilt to begin with, it, it goes with the theme. I wouldn't necessarily do a scrappy binding if I was doing a really formal quilt. Oh yeah. Or one that had all matching fabrics. Yeah. But any scrappy quilt, add a scrappy binding. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I know we're gonna get questions. Yes. Definitely. What size strips do you cut for your bindings? Okay, that is a really good question. So I can I can bring this one over here. So on a quilt like this, where I'm binding and I'm using um, fabric that's the same as my backing for, for my binding, and you can see that I'm, I'm just getting started on this one. I haven't <laughs> even stitched anything down. But um, on something like this, wh where I want a very narrow binding. You can see that on the front it's really just that quarter inch that I see. I'm going to hand stitch the back. I will actually cut these strips at like two inches, maybe two and an eighth. It depends okay. on if whether I use a double layer of batting or not because if I use a double layer of batting I've got to make it a little, sometimes I'll even go two and a quarter because yeah. to be able to get it around. But the trick is I want to have only as much binding showing on the back as on the front. I want it to be even on both sides, yeah. not be bigger on one side than the other. What about you? Well, I have had some where the front is smaller than the yeah. back. Oh, and me too. Again, it, it works. Yeah. Um, I, I like to make sure that my binding is going to cover up the basting stitch that I do yes. when I long arm. Yes. I don't want to have to go back and unpick that. I'm trying so to a lot things. of times I will do my binding strips at maybe two and a quarter. Mm -hmm. If I want a little bit bigger one, two and a half. Yeah. But that's about my average. It, it depends, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, I should caveat there. I do that narrower strip when I'm going to be hand stitching the back. If I'm going to be machine stitching it down, I usually do at least two and a quarter or two and a half because I want to have a little extra fabric to be sure to catch. Yeah. Because I, what I like to do is actually stitch it down on the front, flip it over, and then I will do a stitch right along that edge right there, essentially a stitch in the ditch. Okay, I was gonna ask if it was in the ditch no, or on the yeah, binding. Yeah, yeah, essentially, essentially a stitch in the ditch and I will match my thread color to the front of the quilt. So like on this one, I would use white and it just melts in there and you don't even see it. And mm -hmm. often, unless if people flip it over and look on the back, they think that it's hand stitch binding, yeah. so. So you're probably a lot better at it than I am. Oh. I, I struggle with the machine binding to I get it to catch everywhere. Yeah. Well, and so, that's and that's yeah. the reason why I do the wider. So on the back, I'll have a little bit, a little bit of that, a extra. little bit of that extra. Yeah. And you know, I've actually seen too where people will do have this narrow on the front, and then they actually have maybe an inch or an inch or so showing on the back. And I think that looks great too. Yeah. It's whatever you want to do. So. Yeah, this is just regular um, French fold binding. And the real trick with this is making sure that you get your corners mitered, right? Yes, and I've heard, I can't remember the exact term, but it's not supposed to look like nostrils. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> I have heard that one. <laughs> so That's great. if you look at this, uh -huh. I'm gonna turn it this okay, way go real for quick. It. So if you look at the front, uh -huh. you've got nostril number one right here. Right. 
Okay. You don't want to have that same piece oh, right there. Okay. You want the nostril coming from this direction. Okay. I love that that's the word you're using. That's fantastic. So in other words, you're telling me here that the correct way to fold this would be to be sure and do it this way so that they're going in the two opposite directions. Yes. Okay. okay. Why? I don't know exactly. I don't know. Is I'm anybody going to ever say anything unless you're in a show? Probably, probably not. not. <laughs> and even then, although I have to admit, the one quilt I put in a show, the only comment I got was, I did a really good job on my binding. So Excellent apparently I job. pleased that judge. <laughs> But um, one thing I, I do always make sure and do when I'm hand stitching is I will do a little stitch right there in that, as Christina called it, the nostril, <laughs> the little, that little loop right there. Yeah. And then I will actually go all the way through and catch it just a little bit on the front and then come back so that those um, miters lay nice and flat and you don't accidentally catch them on something. The nostril. The nostril. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't want to catch it on anything. So, so yeah, so that's our, that's the tip there on the binding, I guess, on, yep. on doing those. So I'm going to ask you another question yeah, while yeah, we've yeah. got this one out. Yeah. Okay, we're going to flip that one over and look at this okay. one. Yeah. So you've already stitched yeah. your binding onto the front. Mm -hmm. You've got your mitered corner yep. there. Do you snip or trim okay. your corner or do you leave it there? That is a really good question. And it, once again, it depends on the quilt. So if I... If I'm going to snip anything, I'm going to actually get rid of a little bit of the batting. And usually the only time I will snip any of that is if I'm using a double layer of batting. Because sometimes it's just so thick, when you go to flip that miter over, you can't get it to lay flat. On this quilt, I only did one layer, so I didn't do any of it. Okay. I know that the very first class that I took where I learned how to do binding, she told us to snip the backing right there. And I... Mm -hmm. I didn't like doing that because I felt like my um, corners weren't as full. You know how you talked about with the other one where you rolled from the back? Yeah. You want you want to have a batting inside that binding evenly mm -hmm. so that it's nice and plump, for lack of a, a, a better word. You want it to be equally filled. Equally filled. <laughs> um, but I didn't I didn't like doing that. But I will every once in a while. I'll just kind of use my fingers and just grab a little bit of the fluff. I won't actually cut it, but I'll just kind of pull a little bit out. How yeah. about you? Have you ever done that with a double batting? I haven't done that. Um, a lot of times, if I can't get it to fold and lay yeah. flat, I will just snip a little bit off of like the whole layer. Okay. But I'm going to try that yeah. trick with just snipping some of the batting or just pulling a little bit of the batting yeah. off and see how that works. Just to remove a little bit of that fullness. Yeah. It seems to work pretty well. So, so <laughs> this is our batting, or not our batting journey. Our, our binding journey. Binding. Oh, There's so many good heavens words. binding. Yes. Um, so I think that it's great for everybody to know that there are so many tips out there and yeah. things that we can learn. Like yeah. I, I just learned something new from Kim yeah. and something that I want to try. So don't be afraid to try new things. Yeah. So that's, that's my encouragement I for the totally day. I totally agree with you. I know. <laughs> I remember my first quilt that I had really finished and it was, I hand quilted it. It took me like three years to piece it and I showed it to my aunt that was a great quilter and I didn't know how to do that corner. Mm -hmm. So I kind of rounded the corners and just brought the, the binding around. And she looked at it and she's like, Kim, this is really great, but I'm going <laughs> to teach you how to miter your corners. And she took me in the next room and showed me, and it was so great. And ever since then, I always think of my Aunt Patrice when I miter my corners because yeah. she's the one that taught me how to do it. So, yeah, those memories. you can always learn. You can always learn. I so. remember the person that first taught me that you're supposed to put a binding on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> that was the, that that class that I took that the ladies like you that you bind quilts and I was like what you don't just envelope them I, I thought you just flip the backing over yeah. you know yeah. And, yeah. when you wanted to be fancy that's what we did yeah she's yeah. like um you're supposed to put a, another binding on and hand stitch it and it has to be this way I'm like oh oh okay a little epiphany yeah. hmm. so, so we've so made made yes, improvements big improvements <laughs> over the years. So speaking of fancier bindings, okay, so we've talked about now about just like the basic types of bindings. Let's talk about some fancier bindings. So okay. let's, let's take a look at this pile here. This one's yours. So this is my quilt that I took off to college and I felt so fancy because we put a border around the fabric. And then my <laughs> mom put prairie points on it. Woo! So prairie points are another fun, a fun ad that you can do. Mm -hmm. At the time, because I was a senior in high school, I was a little like, um, mom, that's for baby quilts 
but as time went on, I, I still, I love this quilt. I still have it. it. It, of course, is tied. You can see all the lovely ties here, but um, it's a fun way to fancy up a, a quilt. Yeah. Give it a little variety. Yeah, I've never actually done this myself. That might have to be one of my next challenges. Ooh, but maybe we can have a team challenge. Ooh, that's a good idea. Do we'll carry points. I'll do it on a mini. Because yeah. I remember watching my mom and being like, that is a lot of work. Yeah. So, carry points. So what are some other fun ways that we can finish these quilts? So look oh, at this one. This one's so fun. This is, it doesn't really even have a binding no, on it. No, it's not. So it is called um, chenille. Right and it's just two layers of this chenille ribbon across the top and, and the bottom, or the, the front and the back. And if you look actually in between, if you do just a little bit of digging, you can see that it is surged. surged. Yeah, you can see a little bit here also. So the edge, the edge is like, you know, stitched off. It's nice and surged. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the chenille, and I think that is so cute. And I did this for a baby blanket, mm -hmm. and it washes up oh, so yeah. nice. And it was fun to put it on yeah. and not have to deal with mitering my corners oh, and yeah. stuff. I can totally see that. Yeah. This would be a really quick finish. Yeah. Really fun. Really, really fun. Since we talked about that one being yeah. searched, let's talk about this. This. I know. This is so, so cool. So tell is, us about this. This is a fun one. It is, let's flip it over so we can see the backing. Yeah. It's just stitched along. Oh, it is. Oh my goodness. It's, it's not a finished edge. You can see all of the layers in there. Yeah, you totally can. Wow. Wow. But when you flip it back over, yeah, it looks it, great. It's just perfectly cut out. I don't think I would want to add mm -hmm. anything. I think it would take away from this beautiful yeah. piece of. I think this is like a vintage linen or yeah. something. Yeah, yep. and it's quilted beautifully. And the, because the linen already has a finished edge on it, there's mm -hmm. really no need to add yeah. anything else to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, depending on what you're quilting, if you're doing the vintage linens. Yeah, a binding on this would definitely take away because you'd lose all your little extras yep. for sure. So I think that looks beautiful. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Okay. Oh, this is so cool. This is couching again, right? This is a couched piping. Oh, look at that. How fun. So it just, it makes it look like the... You, you, the, <laughs> you put piping in there, which... <laughs> I My hat goes off to anybody. I tried it once and I did about two inches and then picked it and just did something different. So, yeah. yeah. So, just adding a lo another little layer there, just couching it on, really makes it pop. Yeah, I love so. that. That's great, especially with all that sparkly thread. That's awesome. Speaking of faux oh, yes. piping, faux let's piping. Take a look at this one. So this is this is a fun one. This is a little placemat that I made using um, faux piped binding, and it's actually. This is, this is the actual binding. So it's just two strips of fabric. You guys can see there, two strips of fabric that are um, sewn together. The one is slightly smaller than the other one. And then when you fold them in half, you get that little relief right there. So the trick is making sure you sew it on the right way so that when you flip that edge up on there, you have that little relief. And you just machine stitch right inside. You can see that I just stitched right along that edge right there, right, just right there in that turquoise. I just stitched right in that turquoise. And so it really makes it feel like it's actually piped because you've still got a little bit of a, a flange, is that what they call that, a little yeah. flange right there? So it's quite fancy, but actually it's quite simple. Have you ever done that on a quilt? Yes. <laughs> uh -oh. I, Here I'm comes feeling, the story. I'm feeling a story. Come on. So how did it how did it go? Um, I learned a lot. Oh, good. Me too. I did doing this <laughs> too. I did mine, but I did it with purple and white. Oh, but the purple was the underneath layer. Oh, so it showed through the. So white. it showed through the white. Oh darn. And I didn't do a really good job of joining the ends. Oh right. And so they were off center, kind of. Uh huh. Uh -oh. Guess guess what I did to fix it. Oh no, didn't you just overlap them or something? No, Sharpie marker. <laughs> of course you did. I got to remember Christina and her Sharpies, which honestly, it's a great way to fix those little teeny tiny mistakes on a quilt. Actually, it was a fabric marker, not a oh, Sharpie. Good, good, I just got to clarify that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was able to, since it was white, mm -hmm. I just took a purple pen and I just yeah. kind of drew a little Colored, line to of kind course. of blend it in a little. and. Nobody and it knows. was perfect. Yep. And it was perfect, and nobody knew. Yep. So, so that is a, a fun, a fun way to do this. And this, I remember, I actually did this for a, a little 
mini class that I taught at Houston a few years ago. So fun. Very, very fun. Yeah. What's another type of mining that we've got here? The dreaded. Oh, oh, oh. the points. angles. Yes, the points. angles and points. So this one's a little more work because you've essentially got to do some extra miters along there. You got to um, miter your points. You got a miter on the inside here. This is one that I would definitely do. And you know, this is something we haven't talked about yet, but um, do you um, cut your binding straight of grain or do you do it on the bias? Something like this, you want to be sure and do on the bias. Definitely. So I like to utilize my fabric as well as I can. Me too. <laughs> so <laughs> I generally cut them just in straight strips. Me too, me too, unless if. There's one time mm -hmm that I have actually done it on the bias, uh -huh. and that was for this quilt. Okay, let's take a so look at this quilt. let's pull this one out. Because you had to for this, because look yes. at the curves, you guys. This is so amazing. So tell them what this quilt is for, because it is oh. just amazing. This is for my daughter's wedding. Yes. So, a few more months. soon. Yeah. I am so proud of myself. I am too. I got <laughs> it done in time that I don't have to stress out. Oh. It's, it's wonderful. You're awesome. <laughs> You're awesome. My hat goes off to you. I had another deadline for it. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is this is so great. But you had definitely have to cut on the bias when yes. you were doing these curves. And then when you do that, it lays perfectly. Yeah, I was really, really dreading doing the binding on this yeah. one. And originally, I was going to do a piping with mm -hmm. it. Oh, wow. And I said, <laughs> baby steps. <Never> <laughs> Not. But maybe on the next one, yeah. if I do another one like this, I'm, I'm a lot more confident now that I can do these curved bindings and these points on the inside there. So how did you deal with these points on the inside? Um, I just kind of folded, folded it and mitered it a little bit and yeah. did the best that I could. They're and not they're, they're not perfect. They wouldn't oh, be winning a show. But I think I think they look great. <laughs> Everything lays flat. I think that's the important part. Everything yeah. lays flat. They look great. Yeah, I'm I'm so, happy with it. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I'd like to push myself and try new things. Yeah, me too. Me too. I know I'm making um, one of these double wedding rings too and I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. In the past the only um, bias cut stuff that I've done has always been if it was because I wanted a stripe to like be in oh, a yeah. certain direction. That's, so. that's another great thing to point out. If you because want your stripes or in a certain I don't really want to say plaids, but yeah. yeah. Well, even plaids, I've I've seen people do that so that so that lines move in particular yeah. directions. So, now this this whole episode was actually prompted by a comment we got in one of our earlier watch and learn. Somebody said, "How did like what is facing a quill and what is it?" How, how do I do it? So okay. we're going to talk about that a little more in depth here. Yep. So we've got two quilts. This is actually kind of fun. This, these are two um, Dream Big panels. They're the same panel. This one Kelly quilted. This one I quilted. And Kelly faced hers. So this one is faced. Should we open these up so they can um, see the full effect? Well, I wanted, to, I wanted to kind of have them side by side so you could just see how this one has a binding on it. So it's got the binding on the edge. If you want to hold up that corner right there. Um, it's got the binding on the edge. And then where Kelly's doesn't have a binding on it, the design just falls off the edge. You can kind of see the difference between the two. So do you think that's, do yeah. you need to hold so it up a little bit more? With the binding, it kind of creates a frame. A so frame. I'm, yep. I'm going to open uh, yeah. this Go one Go ahead up. and open it up. So you can see how it frames the entire th um, quilt Quilts. all the way around these edges. Yeah. Whereas when you open that one up, it doesn't have that frame. It allows the eye to keep on going. And it just falls, it, it, mm -hmm. it wraps the edge, it falls off the edge. And that's facing. And so facing is when you just take a strip of fabric and you connect it along here, um, along, and then you fold it back and stitch it so that it's just rolling back that edge of the quilt. I actually, it's, it's almost like... Envelope. And en well, the you know, the, look the, 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 old, the old way of doing it where we would take the backing and just wrap it around the front, it's just mm -hmm. attaching another piece of fabric and rolling it so that we get that. And this is, we see this a lot on modern quilts. Mm -hmm. um, it, it tends to yeah. be a popular, and then, and you know, I, 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 I was, <laughs> my, my dream big panel when I made it, I didn't, I hadn't done facing before, and so I just found it, and then I looked at everybody else's and I was like, oh, I did that <laughs> wrong. <laughs> But that's but okay. it's not actually wrong. It's just a design choice that I made. Yes. So, so let's show you a couple of different ways um, to do 
the facings. So the big thing on facings is these corners. So you can do these, like Kelly did hers where it comes and it's just straight. But what's really important on these is to be sure and do this little top stitching. It's probably kind of hard for you guys to see. I've actually got another sample where it will be easier to see that. And we've got, there's lots of different ways to face a quilt. There's no right way. So Christina did this one here and she actually mitered the corners. Okay. So I use the same fabric as my backing yeah. for my facing. So it almost looks like it blends, but this yeah. is a completely separate piece of fabric this, here. This strip here. And she mitered the corners here, which looks really nice. And that was my flat. first and only facing. facing. <laughs> and I have a Maybe couple Maybe another more. one in the future. I know, I have a couple that I did. So this one, this one here, here, and I can flip. We'll flip these ones over. Let's see, this one here, okay. So I wanted to kind of show these side by side showing the different ways. So we've got the um, mitered corner here. So we've and got the miter, mitered corner here. Yeah. And, and Kim told me to do the mitered corner and that it would be easy. And then I find out that she's doing the easier way and making me do the hard way. <laughs> then I did this one where I just folded it in a little bit. This was after I learned some different ways. And then I did some more research and I actually found this way of doing it where you do a little triangle that you sew on the front and then flip to the back and you get really nice, perfect corners. Oh. So there's, there's, there's no one right or wrong way to do this, just like with binding. There's lots of different ways to yep. do it. So let me show you though. Um, so I've got a little sample here with, with a couple of things. Um, so the basics of facing is you take your strips and you sew them down. And I did this with a white thread so that you can see. Okay, and what kind of strip are you using? So this is a two and a half inch wide strip. Okay. And I gotta tell you that um, in two, I looked at a lot of different tutorials for, you know, cause I've tried a lot of different ways. I've seen everything from a one inch strip to a four inch strip. Okay. So honestly, I think it's however much fabric you want to use. Okay. Do you so. think it matters what size the full quilt is? Um, maybe a little, but it. Um, a, a more a, a, I preference. think I think I think a little bit of a bigger strip helps you have a little more control as you pull it okay. because because okay here's the here's the basics of facing you so you stitch it down like this and then if we look at this piece right here so what we do next is we fold it and press it so that it's just pressed under a little bit on this edge there. Okay, okay. so unlike the binding, you don't yeah. have that fabric folded no. in half already. No, you just fold okay. like a quarter inch down on this edge. Then you actually lay another strip over the top of it for the corner. So you stitch down, sorry, I keep flipping this thing around. So you stitch down here and then you trim. Now this is where we talked about before. Do you trim the corner or not? On this one you do. You definitely do. You, you trim that little corner there. I'm actually going to trim that thread. And then you want to turn it. So you turn it. I'll pull my pins out. And then you want to use a good turning tool. And I learned the hard way. Don't use like a seam ripper because you'll poke a hole through it. So I have, I have a nice turner that I use that you can just kind of poke that corner out. And remember, you're not gonna get, you've got a lot of layers here. You're not gonna get a perfectly nice and sharp corner, but you wanna get that good enough. And then you can press that and steam that really well so that it will be nice and flat. And, and the final thing you wanna be sure and do, and this, I was trying to show you guys this on Kelly's. You guys can see that I just did a little stitch right along this edge, a little top stitch here. Okay. And you can't do it clear to the corner because you have to do it after the fact. But this is like, um, you just do that little seam right there and you make sure and catch your seam on the back, that seam allowance. And that way when you press everything, it rolls all the way to the back and then you don't see any of that facing coming through on the front. That's the really important thing. And then at this point, you would lay it flat. Get that out of the way. And then I would pin it in place and you know, normally I use my um, wonder clips when I'm doing binding, like regular binding. On this one, you have to pin it though. Would you press it before you pin it? Um, no, actually I, I found that what I do is I pin it in place like this. And you can see that I'm actually using glass head pins so I can press over these. Okay. And I pin it so that I'm getting just that little bit of, a, of the front showing on the back so that I know that none of this black 
which I wouldn't actually use black on this quilt, but <laughs> just so you guys could see. I do it so that, that none of that will show from the front. And I pin it in place and then I press it with a lot of steam because that's a lot of layers right along there yeah. that you're going through. That is a lot of layers. And then when I flip it to the front, I have that nice flat faced seam that is just perfect. So, so for a first time facer, yeah. use the same color of yeah. fabric for the facing as the front of your quilt. Or as close to it as you can. And actually, I always do that when I face. Um, the quilt in the background here is one of mine that's actually faced. I think this is the biggest quilt that I face. And I wanted the design to just fall off of the edge. These lines here, you guys can see the lines just fall off of the edge. So that's why we chose, I chose to do the facing. And my facing actually matches my backing, but you can see the stitching right along here that holds it in place. And you can see that I've got that, just a little bit of a relief from the front to the back so that you don't see any of my backing unless you're kind of at the side. So I didn't actually match that one, but it worked out okay. <laughs> so this is a great example of facing off modern quilts. Yeah, exactly. And this, this pattern is from uh, Paper Sack Sten, and it's called the Paper Round Quilt. And I love this because it reminds me of books, and I'm a big reader. So this is, this is a, fun, a fun quilt that I did. Pretty simple quilting, but um, I think the facing makes this quilt. It just has that nice modern clean look. So hopefully we've answered your questions about binding and facing. Now, caveat, we didn't go through all the steps of how to do this. If you want to know how to do this, I recommend that you do a search on Google or whatever yeah. and, and find a good tutorial that'll walk you through a, step, a, a process that you'll be comfortable with yeah. because there's lots of ways to do this. So. And lots of people that have do this all of the time. It's something that they're really, really good at. Yeah. And they've got lots of great information. Exactly. So. Exactly. So I think that's pretty much what we've got. Yep. I think the overall feel for this thing is finish those quilts. Yeah. However you want. Some people say, I've got all these quilt tops. And then they say, oh, I've got all these quilts that are quilted. But they're not done until you get them bound yeah. or faced. Yep. Exactly. So get those quilts done. So. Yeah. Thank you for joining us and make sure that you subscribe and watch our YouTube channel and Facebook and have fun quilting.